Metcalf's Law began its life in around 1980 as a sales tool for my company to sell uh, the internet, specifically Ethernet, which is the plumbing of the internet, to customers. And this slide, which I gave to my six-person sales force, basically said that the the cost of a network goes up linearly as you put them on, as you put the nodes on the net, but the number of possible connections goes up faster than that. It goes up as the square. So then some years later, in 1995, a man named George Gilder was impressed with this idea and he called it Metcalf's Law. It basically says that the value of a network goes up as the square of the number of users or attachments. So it's an attempt to quantify the network effect. My name is Bob Metcalf, and I'm Professor of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the University of Texas at Austin. I invested in energy, uh, and I called it energy, I did not call it clean tech, uh, for about 10 years. The wrong 10 years, I might add. Uh, and it found me. I, was a, I had just become a venture capitalist around the year 2000. And the president of MIT uh, gave a talk about what she thought the priorities should be going forward. And energy was the top of her list. So being an MIT uh, fanboy and alum, I decided to make that my theme. And I began investing in energy startups. And the reason I didn't call it clean tech is because energy can't just be clean. It has to be cheap. And that's been the problem with solar and wind and other things. They've been clean, but not cheap. So in order to solve energy, it has to be clean and cheap. So hence, I didn't call it clean tech. I just uh, referred to my efforts as uh, helping to solve energy. So what, what I have done in my own thinking about energy is to use the internet as a, a model for how we're going to solve energy. Uh, so, I, so I was there when the internet was built, so my head is full of lessons for how you do that, so I've been trying to apply them to energy. And for example, storage. The internet at the beginning had no storage in it. It was the old telephone network which had no storage, but now it's full of storage. You, uh, terabyte, you have terabytes on your servers and your iPhone. So, well, so by analogy, energy, uh, I claim, will be so one of the elements of solving energy will be adding storage, energy storage. Now that's turned out to be really true. A anyone in the energy field will tell you that energy storage well, to, to uh, you know, so that when the sun goes down, you still have energy, and when the wind stops, you still have energy. And, uh, and then there's also the randomness of demand. You know, there's peak demand, and then you want to be depleting the storage, and then when there's very little demand, then you want to be recharging the storage. So just like in the internet, uh, storage has um, become part of the solution for solving energy. Well, the, um, the big debate in energy, I think, is between uh, suppressing the emission of CO2 as the highest priority, including making energy really expensive in order to deter its use. And by deterring the use of energy, you produce less CO2 and therefore you solve climate change. So that's one side. And the trouble with it is that uh, when you make energy expensive, economic growth goes down. And it's through economic growth that we're going to solve energy. So then there's the other point of view, which says that the solution to energy is not raising the price of energy through taxes and other means, but it's putting money into research and development to develop cheap and clean energy sources, like improving solar, improving wind, developing geothermal, uh, fission, fusion, uh, so those are the, in my uh, oversimplifying, but one side there's suppress CO2 by making energy expensive, which I think is a dead end, and the other one is investing money in R&D uh, through technology to develop cheap and clean energy sources to replace the CO2 emitters. So the, uh, the old model of energy is you created in centralized power plants and then you distribute it out 
further and further. Uh, that's an extreme view of the current model. And in my model, energy sources are distributed. And that's an opportunity then to create a network of energy sources and sinks. So I think if, if, I, leave any, <laughs> if I leave any mark at all on energy, it will be the, uh, enhancing the network version, the network view of energy, that we're exchanging energy among random, uh, uncertain sources and sinks. The purpose of the network is to, is to move the energy around to be sure you have enough of it when you need it from random sources. Storage, storage would be in the network. So, uh, so the network mentality would be something I'm contributing to, solving energy through networks.